You always dreamed about making a video game yourself, but you didn't know where or how to start? Then you've come to the right place. By following this video tutorial, you will have a great game in almost no time. You'll learn about the basics in using the software Unity and write real code by yourself, step by step. Hi, I'm a part-time indie developer and illustrator. I've gained my knowledge through thousands of online tutorials and now I want to give something back and share these skills with you. If you like these videos, subscribe to the channel to not miss new videos coming up and if you want to support me, check out my website that contains my published games and a detailed dev blog and much more. Or hit me up on Twitter. Now what kind of game are we creating together? One of the most common mistakes of beginners is to start an overly ambitious project without focus, which often results in demotivation and the end of the project. That's why in this course we will focus on a smaller project and get to know everything around it, which can mark the beginning of your own indie journey. It will be this small but nice Art Thief game where players have to memorize the artwork in a museum within a given time and then steal the piece your boss demands. In this project we will be talking about player movement, importing graphics, creating a timer, animating the characters, collision detection and much more, explained step by step and in an easy to understand way over several episodes. You'll need the following things for the tutorial, no matter if you're using Windows or Mac OS. Unity Hub. Unity Hub is a handy tool that helps you manage your Unity versions and projects all in one. Download it by clicking on the link in the description. I will explain the exact procedure on how to download a Unity version by using the Unity Hub later in this video. Visual Studio. Visual Studio is the software in which we will write the code for our game. Normally it is included in the download of a Unity version. If it's not the case, you can also download Visual Studio via the link in the description. I've prepared as well some files for you, which you can download on my website under Downloads. Of course, you can use your own files, but for starting it's easier to work with the same graphics. But please pay attention. Some of the graphics are downloaded from the internet and are for educational purposes only. So for copyright reasons, use your own graphics if you want to publish the game or a further developed version of it. And now, let's get started. When you start a project, you of course need to download the Unity Hub. I'll put a download link for the Unity Hub into the description of this video. And when you start it, it most likely has no installed Unity version in it. So you can simply go to Add and select the version. I'm working with Unity 2018.4.21F1. And if you continue here, you get to this page where you can choose additional modules to download. For us to start, it's okay just to choose the Mac build support as I'm working on a Mac. And if you're working on a PC, of course, the Windows build support. Additionally, I've chosen the WebGL build support. So you can hit done and it will start to download your version. In some Unity Hub versions I experienced a strange bug where the installation will shortly disappear after downloading. Then you either have to go and locate it manually on your machine or you create simply a folder, name it maybe Unity Editors and change the installation path to that folder. Just look that the folder is not inside the applications folder and then it should work and the installation should appear. When we go to the projects tab, I already have two projects set up as you will probably see an empty field here. So I'm going to hit create new and I'm going to select 2D as we're making a 2D game. Now the project name should not contain any special characters like these. So I'm going to call this Unity Tutorial Art Thief and also the location. I've chosen to put it here on desktop on a separate folder. Um, let's see if we can find it quickly and yep here it is I'm selecting this folder so and I hit create and that will launch our unity editor don't worry this might take a while and unity will uh, initialize several things here we are now this is the unity editor and you can already see it has um, a few windows that are open for example we have a hierarchy window where already a main camera is sitting in. You're not seeing this uh, very well in this 2D perspective. 
So if you go to the scene window and change to 3D, you can see that there is a camera that is pointing in the, the Z direction. So I'm going to click 2D here, up here again to move back to the 2D um, view. And you're seeing I'm using uh, this hand to drag this window around. And I can also use the right mouse button or the middle mouse button in my case, but the same is um, choosable up here where you have the hand tool. If you press the hand tool, you can drag around your scene um, in the scene window. As soon as we have objects, for example, the main camera, you don't have to do this, but I just created the game object and I can also move it around, etc. So I'm gonna delete this quickly and explain you all the windows. We have a hierarchy. This is an overview that will be displayed in here, mostly game objects. And uh, for example, here's a main camera sitting. Um, and as soon as I click on something in here in our hierarchy, we will see it in the inspector. Maybe it's not totally accurate, but I explain the inspector as the settings of each object that is sitting here. So if I have nothing selected here, nothing will appear in the inspector. But as soon as I go on the main camera, I see uh, certain things. For example, this camera component that is attached to this camera object, we can in here already change, for example, the background color. This is the scene window. It will show the whole scene where you can zoom in and out and drag around how we've just seen it. Um, while this window up here is the game window. Maybe in your editor it looks somehow like this. So you have a huge scene window and you have to go up here and click on the game tab to make it visible. If this is the case or any other window appears up here and you want to make it visible all the time, you can just go up here, left mouse click and drag it wherever you want. For example, down here. This is not what I want. I'm going to drag it up here and uh, it's opened the asset store. I don't need this tab. So I can right click and close this tab. And I also don't need the animator. I'm going to right click and close this tab. So what I have here is actually the game itself when we build it and building means something like exporting your game to uh, yeah, to be a playable game. All of this is just an editor. So also here it might be the case that you're in free aspect mode. This means uh, yeah, you can drag around the window and if you look close you can see that these white lines are uh, referring exactly to the size of the game window here on the right side. So we're gonna go up here where it says free aspect and switch to standalone because this is like a standard uh, game window size for computers, for your Mac or your um, PC. Bam, here we go and now you see it has borders and it doesn't uh, change its ratio when I change the uh, window size. So this is the game window, this is the scene window. We have talked about the hierarchy where all our objects will be listed as soon as we put some, some in and also the inspector where we'll see all the um, settings that match our, for example, camera and other objects. You also have a camera preview uh, down here which represents more or less how the game will uh, actually look. It's similar to the game window. Um, another very important uh, window for us is the console. Also this might look somehow uh, different in your case or the console is maybe right behind the projects and you maybe don't have this animator. Same here. If you don't see the console or you want to make it permanently visible, just grab it, left mouse click and drag it wherever you want to see it. So. I like to work this way with the console down here. The console will print everything um, that our scripts do or that the editors do that we need to know. So you see up here is a speaking bubble, I think they're called, and an alert symbol and this warning symbol. So I um, recommend you to click on all of these so that they appear slightly lighter. 
Um, this means they're activated and you'll actually see when um, we're gonna print something later in the code and warnings and errors they will all appear here in the console. So the project folder here represents nothing else than your project folder here. So if I go inside in my art tutorial um, folder on my desktop where I've put all the stuff inside, you can see the asset folder and this is the one that we really need. Um, it's represented here and we also should have a scene folder inside the assets folder. Let's check. Yes, here we are. Don't worry about these uh, meta files yet. They're not important for us in this uh, beginner stage. That's it for the introduction and the first episode of the tutorial. In the next episode we will deal with the import of the graphics and let the player become alive by programming the movement and much more. If you have questions, post them in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and connect. See you next time!